Hello everyone, uh, in this video we are going to discuss the second method that is used to produce ultrasonic waves. In the last one we have seen how ferromagnetic materials are gauged to produce ultrasonic waves. So in this method we are going to make use of piezoelectric crystals. So the method is called piezoelectric method. Now let's see what is the underlying principle behind this method. So the principle is inverse piezoelectric effect. So for that you need to know what is piezoelectric effect. The word piezo means squeeze, to squeeze. That is certain crystals when it is squeezed or when it is uh, applied some pressure on its surfaces, it will show some electrical effect. And this phenomena is called piezoelectricity. That is so by the application of some mechanical pressure along its axis, along its mechanical axis, the crystal will generate electricity as a result of it. Some naturally occurring crystals that shows that displays piezoelectric phenomena are quartz, tourmaline, etc. So when a suitably cut quartz crystal is subjected to a mechanical pressure along the opposite faces, along its uh, mechanical axis on the opposite faces, then an electrical, a corresponding electrical potential difference will be induced in the opposite faces perpendicular to the direction of the applied stress. So this is piezoelectric, piezoelectric effect. So what we are making use here is the inverse of it, the converse of it, which is called inverse piezoelectric effect, where an, when an alternating EMF is applied to the opposite phases of a suitably cut quartz crystal, then it will undergo some contraction or exp expansion alternatively in the perpendicular direction along its mechanical axis. That is, an alternating EMF is used to vibrate the piezoelectric crystal so that it will vibrate in the ultrasonic frequency and we are getting ultrasonic waves out of it. So this phenomena is made use of in this method. So let's see what is the experimental setup that we are using here. So generally uh, piezoelectric crystals are uh, easily available and they are more cheaper and, the, and this method is rather efficient also. So here we have a oscillatory circuit primary circuit that consists of a battery and a key and two sets of inductors are there L1 and L2 and the L1 inductor is in parallel combination with a variable capacitor C and this, this circuit, this parallel LC circuit will constitute a tank circuit that is able to produce electrical oscillations of frequency 1 by 2 pi root of L1C which you might be familiar with and the ends of this tank circuit is connected to the base terminal of a NPN transistor in the CE configuration. The biasing is provided by the battery. So another coil is there L2 which is connected to the collector terminal and this will act like a feedback coil, feedback mechanism and there is a large inductor coil L3 that acts as a secondary coil whose ends are connected to the electrodes A and B that gives a electrical contact to the specimen crystal which is a piezoelectric crystal. We generally use quartz for this purpose. So a quartz crystal will be sandwiched in between two electrodes. So whatever current is flowing through inductor will, will be generating a potential difference across this piezoelectric crystal. So let us see how this experiment setup is used to, is, is working to produce ultrasonic waves. So when the circuit is switched on, so you can see, hope you can see both the papers. When the circuit is switched on, what happens is the current flows through the circuit, isn't it? So the current flows and the charging will start in the capacitor. Capacitor will start to charge and after some time the charging gets over, the capacitor discharges the charges through the inductor L1. So the capacitor discharges through L1 and hence the electrical energy is in the form of electrical and magnetic fields in the capacitor and the inductor respectively. That is the current flowing through the inductor L1 will produce an induced magnetic field here. A current carrying conductor will induce a magnetic field. So due to this some electrical oscillations will be developed in this tank circuit having a frequency 1 by 2 pi root of L1C. So, 
due to the flow of current through the inductor an electrical frequency will be generated in the tank circuit and since the current will produce a current is the current through the inductor L1 is able to generate an induced magnetic field the a magnetic field will be produced in the vicinity of L1 and L3 and since L3 is in the vicinity of the magnetic field induced magnetic field of inductor L1 there is a rate of change of flux that will occur in the inductor coil L3 so due to the rate of change of flux in L3 an EMF will be produced across its ends and the induced current will flow through the inductor coil the current that is produced here is alternating in nature and hence the whatever current that is produced here or the by induction whatever current is produced in the inductor coil L3 will also be alternating in nature so this current flows through the secondary coil and will uh, will will produce a electrical potential difference or, or electric field will be created uh, on both the electrodes since the current is alternating in nature the polarities will keep on changing alternatively so the electrodes at one instant if the electrode a is positive and b is negative then the next instant the polarity will reverse and the a electrode a will be negative and the b and the electrode b will be positive so due to this alternating polarity the crystal will be contracting and expanding according to the periodicity or according to the frequency of the change in polarity that is the crystal will be vibrating with the same frequency as that of the electrical oscillation that is produced in the tank circuit so the crystal is vibrating here now due to the due to the flow of current alternating current through the inductor coil l3 there is an induced magnetic field produced around l3 the l2 coil is placed in such a way that it is associated with the magnetic field produced induced by the coil l3 so there is an associated rate of change of flux in the inductor coil l2 and due to the rate of change of flux according to faraday's law of electromagnetic induction an emf is generated an induced emf is generated and induced current will flow through the coil l2 and the emf or the current produced induced in the coil l2 is fed back to the transistor amplifier where where it will get superimposed with the electrical oscillations or emf produced in the tank circuit so that the action or the um, operation of the tank circuit will be sustained so that for all, always the electrical oscillations in the tank tank circuit are maintained so this is the feedback mechanism provided by the coil l2 now in order to produce ultrasonic frequency we need the crystal to vibrate with maximum amplitude the crystal will vibrate with maximum amplitude when it is vibrating in its natural frequency that is the tank circuit should should be able to produce the frequency equal to that of the natural frequency of the crystal so for that we can adjust the value of capacitance here and by adjusting the capacitance value we can adjust the current in the tank circuit so by at at one point when the current reaches the maximum value the electrical oscillations of the tank circuit will become equal to the natural frequency of vibration of the crystal at that instant the crystal will be vibrating in resonance with the frequency of oscillation of the tank circuit that is the system is in resonance now at resonance the natural frequency of the crystal which is given by 1 by 2 l in the root of e by rho where l is the length of the crystal e is its young's modulus elasticity and uh, rho is the density of this crystal will become equal to the electrical oscillation 1 by 2 pi root of l1 c at this instant the crystal starts to vibrate with maximum amplitude and hence the surrounding particle the medium particles will also starts to vibrate with the same frequency with maximum amplitude hence ultrasonic waves will be generated as a consequence of it so this is the working of ultra the working of piezoelectric method now piezoelectric gener generators are very efficient and compact and it can be fabricated to operate under any frequency in the entire ultrasonic frequency range this is the advantage of this particular method hope you all have understood this thank you